we have a series of parables for the next few weeks. Uh, parables, those stories that you get to settle into and, and kind of look around the scene and the story. Hear what you hear, see what you see, experience the setting and the story, and, and learn something from it, from that experience. This week we have the parable of the sower scattering seeds. How do you hear this parable? Who or what are you in the story? Are you the soil? Are you the sower? If you're the soil, what kind of soil? Or how do you feel as the sower? Do you hear the Great Commission echoing in the distance? Uh, the end of this book, this Gospel of Matthew, those last couple verses where it says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. How much will you yield? How many seeds that you plant will grow? It's interesting uh, that the first part of this passage is clearly said to the crowds as a whole, but uh, in the verses that have been omitted for this uh, particular um, reading, in between, Jesus um, speaks directly to the disciples um, and continues into this second part that starts with verse 18. It's almost like he's preparing them for then for when they will be going out to sow themselves, right? Go make disciples of all nations. Uh, almost like he's letting them know that as they are tasked with the sowing, they are going to see different results, just as Jesus will, just as Jesus did. Now we hear both of these sections today. So... Um, I think there, and you know, I do think that there are times when uh, each of these sections could apply to us. Um, and, and not only that, but they could apply to us as individuals, but also um, as a faith community as well. And you think about it, uh, Sunday school teachers, worship volunteers, ministry coordinators, committee chairs, all do some scattering, right? Some sowing of those seeds, uh, parents, mentors, and musicians do too. Um, you know, scatter those seeds. And and notice, the example isn't uh, a carefully um, planned and planted, you know, process um, where, you know, you kind of are measuring out, you know, how far apart the, the seeds or the seedlings need to be. Um, and this one here and that one there. Sorry to the gardeners out there. Um, but in this case, it, it is scattering seed far and wide and everywhere. Uh, in that case, it's more like the analogy of the rain and snow in the reading from Isaiah, which falls on, on every part of the earth, not just the gardens and the fields, but the rocks and the trees and the rivers too. It's scattered and it cannot be unscattered or collected without affecting a few things along the way. The seeds will also change things just by being in whatever environment they're in. What is that environment? Let's talk about the soil. What kind of soil are we? As I said earlier, I think that can be answered or a question that can be considered both individually and collectively. What kind of soil are we? Are we the path? that misunderstands completely and is so inhospitable that any seeds have no chance to grow. Paths are, are solidly packed for a purpose, but in that they are unchanging and unwielding. Are we the rocks, excited for the possibility, the potential, the idea, but unable to, to follow through and allow real roots to take hold when the work begins? Are we the thorns, distracted and overgrown with everything the world pushes into our space or into our awareness, and so cannot do more than a, a brief acknowledgement of that seed before being pushed and pulled to, to let that word go in favor of what the world has already put on our plate? Are we the good soil? Do we bear fruit, do ministry, speak truth, 
care for the lessons that have been taught to us and deepen our understanding of them, grow roots and branches that can weather the distractions of the world and handle the work when it needs to be done. To be honest, I think there are times when we're probably all of these things, um, different things at different times. So maybe this is for us listening as the crowd too, to reflect on the soil types we are or have been. And here's the thing, soil can change. I've seen it. You probably have too. When a road is built, when plants or trees are introduced to maintain nutrients or prevent erosion, when a field or a garden is tilled, fertilized, and planted, when a pond is drained or, or a river is flooded, the soil can change. It can happen slowly or quickly depending on how that change is made. And good soil, that takes some work. Uh, take some work before the planting happens. So if we're looking to cultivate something, we have to pay attention to that part of the parable too. Learn the lessons, have the conversations, find the vision of what this field should be, and then take intentional steps to creating a, a ground that can grow into that vision, a place that can grow into that vision in ourselves and in our church, for deep roots that hold firm in the work and branches that can reach out into the world. And in the meantime, keep scattering and sowing, keep growing, and keep tending to the soil. Amen.